I think there's a bigger picture question. Do we want to spend time doing this? I think that we ought to. Um, I think that it's a place that we need to um, devote some more resources because either you know, parcel should be proactively um, by this board, you know, a, a, pro a proactive preference stated that they remain in general government the way they are now, or um, should be transferred to some other department for a, a usage or getting them on the tax rolls, the usage that benefits the town, or getting them on the tax rolls, or again, they should stay in general government because there are many parties interested, but there's no definitive enough plan yet to make, make a decision. And I, I guess I'd be interested in hearing about from the town administrator and the rest of the, the board about how they feel about devoting some resources to such an effort. <laughs> so I'll throw that open for discussion, which I guess the question is really, should we devote more re resources to reviewing that? Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, I think uh, some of the parties here that have expressed an interest should be able to give us some sort of rationale for, for why. Uh, again, in the past, we didn't have a real active housing partnership. Uh, we have one now that's really starting to make some headway in where affordable housing was in the past and we weren't even responsible sometimes. So, so that's a positive thing, but also there's going to be a long term thing. We can't just go out and build 20 years of affordable housing uh, somehow or another. The money's just not there and it's going to have to be a take measure approach as far as uh, where we can do it, which lot should we prioritize. Again, there might be something where uh, some sort of when we're talking with some of these developers that come into town, get some off-site uh, affordable housing as part of a cost the development. Things of that nature we would utilize some of these some of these parcels for that purpose. So I think we get the, the housing partnership really is uh, the housing authority really starting to take a more active interest in meeting our needs and our goals. So you know. They put a lot of yeses down here, and some of them are pretty small parcels. I don't know if you can do much on 3,000 square feet, you know, unless you're going to have parking for something next door or something like that. Uh, same thing with the conservation, uh, generally, you get anything that's uh, open mountains pond area, you know, it's very sensitive, and uh, it's got some sort of dampness on it, which is a lot of the town. Uh, you know, obviously, they're going to express their interest in it. And as Tom Mishra pointed out, previous boards been reluctant to transfer a, a large number of passes to conservation because it's been difficult to get it back out when it's part of the use. So it's not that you're slighting the conservation, but slighted it in the past. We had no interest in selling it or doing anything with it, but we didn't necessarily want to cover the conservation just in case something else came up. So that's it. Mr. Sarah. I think it would be very helpful if any department puts a year stamp put a justification for why they're making the request. That would help. That could be part of the form being sent out in the future. I assume you send a memo or something like that. I think it's like DPW. I mean, we're obviously going to do something with our DPW garage in the future. Um, also, they have uh, sewage issues. That, you know, that person was really a hopper with a couple of acres. Uh, half a million square feet, of it. but that's the uh, old well site. Oh, it's the old well site. Mm -hmm. We had a developer up in that Joe Circle Crystal Lane area that was looking for some town hall there for access to it. I think it's about the point of time up in the time after the night. The DPW really had an interest in something. summarize that, that it seems to me that the board wants more than that, you know, more than this and more proactive role that includes being able to visualize where these parcels are and then also understanding the reasons why there is interest on the 
half dozen or so that there are no interest, I think if you confirm that and you want to show that us where those are and we want to consider putting those out for you know for a butters to purchase that that's reasonable to consider that, but um, that you know we, we do want to take a little more proactive role in at least sorting sorting and understanding this list and understanding what we should hold in abeyance and understanding what we should move on and, and understanding that it's probably a very small portion um, that we would move on quickly, but at least putting them in the buckets and keeping up that, you know, if the housing partnership says we have a five-year goal of this and these lots are in the five-year goal, at least that gives you some plan to look forward to in the five years to me measure where they are. Yeah, and I just also think um, that in terms of, of, of mapping this out, uh, you know, you'd be able to, the housing partnership and so forth, would be able to show how they can group smaller lots to be able to make it buildable. And at the same time, I think Mr. O'Leary already pointed out, with wastewater <coughs> management and so forth, they're going to have to identify some parcels for, for water treatment uh, facilities and so forth. So um, I think by taking that step, try to eliminate if these different authorities have different plans for the same piece of land, maybe we can start to work that out a little bit so that we're not wasting effort mm -hmm. on a particular par parcel when maybe it's the will of the board or whatever that that be set aside for some other uh, mm -hmm. So I yeah I, I would I, I would think a good <coughs> next step for us would be to, to get the mapping process going then once we see that, because I'd like to have that information in front of me before we have these different boards come in and tell us what they want to do with the land. I'd like to be able to see where the land actually is and what surrounds it mm -hmm. and, and so forth, what other uses uh, going on in, around that particular piece of land for us. So it'd be easier to evaluate what we're being told by these other different boards. Okay. No, Mr. Younger, could you maybe put put together a plan, you know, of going back with, with step one being the mapping and then step two being um, seeking out a more definitive interest um, with with description and maybe um, in the next week or two just get back to the board um, in a memo of kind of what your timetable. I think the first go first project project is is the timetable map. Who's the board the best overall view of what's available out there and who's interested in it? Okay. So if it's got there, it's But there would be a steep I know from the whole other boards, why it's white. Okay. Anything else on this topic before we move on? Okay, uh, we're going to go back in time on the agenda. And thank Mr. Armacost for his patience. It's only 10 after 8, it could have been worse. Could have been much <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have extra innings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Mr. Armacost is here on behalf of the Thompson Club for um, a, a one day license. Um, Mr. Callaghan and I are joint membership to the Thompson Club, so we will abstain from voting and from the discussion. And so, Mr. Sarah, our clerk will, will chair this discussion and right? the vote. And if you need to Yeah, I wish a couple of minutes of comments, and, and really, uh, I, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Pool and Tennis Committee at the Thompson Country Club, uh, and I'm here to, uh, to present an application for a one-day alcohol license, the purpose of which would be used uh, for an outdoor social event, weather permitting, this Saturday evening, July 24th. It's an adults-only uh, social event. Uh, let me just give a little bit of background. Uh, I think you, you probably all have a copy of the application that I, I submitted. Uh, Thompson Country Club currently has uh, a license for the consumption and the sale of alcoholic beverages, but the uh, defined premises for the current license are in the physical clubhouse building itself only. Uh, and that is not a license we're intending to alter or change in any way. So what I'm talking about is a new one-day license. Um, this Saturday, we're holding um, what is hopefully going to be an annual party. Uh, for members and their guests, again, adults only, and uh, it'll be a, an event that has hors d'oeuvres, drinks, uh, dancing, as well as a buffet dinner, 
uh, and what we'd like to do, purely for ambiance purposes and because it's under the stars and so forth, is to do this outdoors in the pool area. And I have a, a map that I can orient you to in a second that I submitted with the application. It's a physically separate uh, location from the clubhouse about 50 yards away. But again, it's not defined as part of the current liquor license, and that's why I'm here to apply for the one-day license under the auspices of uh, what I think is Mass General Law 138, Section 14. Um, there will not be any swimming, so this is not a swim party for adults. People will be dressed in regular attire. It's an evening event, uh, but purely for ambiance purposes only, we'd like to, to hold it in the, in the pool area. Um, I could just orient you because I'm sure there may be some questions about what the place looks like. Attachment one to the, uh, the application was a very crude hand drawing that I did of the, uh, the Thompson area uh, vertically. And so on the, on the left is the clubhouse uh, facility and that's where the current license uh, is good for. Uh, in the top right is the pool facility uh, and the, the large square on the outside is a six foot fence. Uh, there is one main gate on the right side that's the only way in or out. Uh, and then uh, this is a big concrete area, so most of the, the party and the hors d'oeuvres and so forth will be on the right-hand side near the restrooms. There will be a band that will be set up um, inside the, um, the entry behind the guard shack to the right where there's a, a canopy set up. And it's a large open area where there will be a band set up and dancing. Again, this is all weather permitting. If it's raining, we'll, we'll move it indoors into the ballroom. But, uh, but that's really the purpose of this. And again, since our liquor license does not cover this area, we're here to apply for uh, a one-day license purely for this event. So, any questions? A modified license for next year for the pool area? A permanently modified? Uh, we would have no intent of doing that because, you know, our intent, you know, I mean, the, the intent is never to serve alcohol on a regular basis down in the pool area. It's purely for, for one party. I think if we... If we want to do this on a regular basis, um, maybe it might raise a separate question because we don't want to have to keep coming to the board every year or a couple times a year for these one-day licensees. But as I understand it, the, um, the law provides special licensees up to 30 days a year if people need it, but again, we're not asking for that. It's just for one party. Joe? I'll, I'll, I'm all set. The question I have is yeah. uh, the personnel that will be uh, serving yeah. Are they same personnel that would be doing it? The yeah, they would all be employees of the Thompson Club. So Andy Daly, who is not a member, but he is the club manager employed by the club, he'll be leading that, and his staff will be doing the serving, so the hors d'oeuvres as well as the mm -hmm. bar. Mm -hmm. And for an activity like that in the evening out at the pool, uh, is there any danger, or, or what, are you, what are you doing to prevent people from falling in the pool? Or? Well, it's a very large area. Uh, if you, if you, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's a very large area. So the distance from, in fact, if, if I pull the, the map area out, the, the far right area where the, the bar would be set up and the hors d'oeuvres will be, uh, literally is a, a four foot fence uh, separating that from the area where the three pools are. And you know this isn't to scale, but uh, the area on the top right where the band is, uh, I would say from the uh, from the fence over to that pool is, is easily 50 or 60 feet, uh, and then about 50 or 60 feet back vertically. So there's a fair amount of distance. Uh, we weren't planning to put any type of you know, barrier in, in the way, but if you, know, if you think we should, we would. Uh, but you know, that, people will be dancing in that top right area, and, and it'll be, again, you know, you know, 20, 30 feet from the, the edge of the pool. Considerable amount of distance between the pools and then when they're serving all that. It, it, it actually worked out pretty well. So, by the way, I don't have a problem. And pretty respectful to the people. Joe. <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you, Mr. Mr. I, I just have a question, and, yeah. and, and I'm wondering if, in fact, you, you actually need the license, Mr. Arnold Quest, because where, where is the serving going to take place? At the pool area? It would, I mean, be, if it would be in the pool area, yeah. Oh, because I was going to say, if they're going to get the drinks in the club, I don't think there's anything on your license that says you can't walk outside with it. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you need the license. I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure 